back 10, 12 years ago, she was like a lost dog, maybe a year old at the most, but she sat in a little corner shivering and you can't get close to her because she's nervous and everything, right? So just give, her, just give her a bit of water, a bit of food, right? She didn't leave. <laughs> there was this one dog that was pure white and it was the look in his face and his eyes and his ears standing up. Uh, we just couldn't say no, it, it had to be him. I went through a divorce last year and this pretty much saved my uh, sanity. He's clearly my child. I had one of these dogs for about 17 years and he passed away. So about two years later, my brother called and said there was a, another one like him up in Perry Sound, tied beside a garage, uh, needed to be rescued. So I thought, well, I'll go have a look. And when we went and had a look, he was uh, in pretty rough shape. He had fleas and worms and he needed a home. So I took him home. <laughs> The relationships I have with my animals are actually, I uh, hope my family doesn't see this, because <laughs> much stronger than the bonds I have with people, including my own family. Um, unconditional love. And I don't even know if people are capable of that. Woody was the first one that I got, the oldest bird. He started the whole, <laughs> the whole lineup of all the animals that followed. He's from Toronto Humane too, Berkeley. Sonoma's from California. Woody's from California. Maximilian's from North York Shelter. He's, they're all rescues. They're all rescues. Nobody claimed her, nobody came around. She just become part of the family, just automatically. And we left the whole door open. Like this. And we all went home. Barbie's all stressed out. Because she's trying to guard the place with all her might, her heart the whole night. And she's exhausted. She actually did her job. Without her, I'm sure this place would be ransacked. I'm pretty sure. You can't tell how time flies. You don't know, you don't expect it. What do you mean she's going to pass away? I'm sure it seems like, you know, just a year or two ago that, you know, she came into your life. Yeah, it was why, like, all of a sudden, wow, you count the years. Yeah, it's funny. Because she's 14 then. Yeah, she's 14. And people say, oh, don't be too sad because that's where they live, uh, you know. Mm. I actually see her then I see my wife. <laughs> right. And, and that's sort of the truth because yeah. I'm with her almost 14, 15 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. On a, every day on a daily basis. And she's always like beside you and stuff like that. So she was a, a good friend. A very, very good friend. Well, he was, he was 100. And he, like 15 in dog years, so that's 100. He, he couldn't live anymore, so we understand that. Years 14 and 15, he was getting slower and slower. We knew it was going to happen someday. And then it got slower and slower and slower, and then we took the dog to the vet, and the, dog, the vet said, well, basically, this is it. We had a last walk with him in the sunshine, taken to the vets, but it just felt like their last moment together. That was beautiful. And, and we had to kiss him goodbye. My wife was really upset uh, when Killer passed away, and you know, so was I. And sometimes when you take pen to paper, it can kind of help you uh, with the grieving process. And to this day, I don't even think I wrote that letter. I think Killer did. I passed away on September the 19th of this year at 11.58 hours. My century of existence was full of love, joy, fun, pleasure, you will no longer be able to contact me. You see, I now live in heaven and will reside at this location eternally. We do not receive mail from your planet, nor are we the least bit interested in cell phones, computers, or any of your other silly communication devices. But like a good guardian angel, I will continuously watch over you to protect your best interests and ensure your personal safety. So do not worry about me. I'm doing very well here in my new home. Someday I will see you again when you join me in this beautiful new place. Love always and somewhat respectfully yours, Killer. Around the time I got him, there'd been a lot of loss in my family. Um, both parents, I've lost two brothers and just on and on and on. There was, there was lots, of, lots of death. And I remember thinking, should I get this dog or not? You know, I had one for 17 years, and, and, and it's dealing with the loss, um, all of the people. And 
and uh, I was at the cottage and I sat down and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go and look at this dog, should I bring him home? And I was like, mom, what would you do? And she was gone, and I swear to God, I went and got coffee and I came back and I walked through the room and I could smell her perfume and I went, okay, guess I better go take, <laughs> take a look at this dog. And uh, yeah, he's been perfect ever since. This is Noah in this one. She actually lived to be 11 years old, which is quite old for a bunny. Oh, this is uh, Stella. It's another bunny that I saved from the shelter, local shelter. And this urn has two fish in it. Anyone who's had an animal they've loved, a dog, a cat, a bird, and they've lost that animal, um, I'm sure they'll tell you that if they were connected with that animal that they suffered greatly when the animal passed away because it's like, it's like losing a member of your family or a best friend. It's, it's very hard. They will all be cremated. And then, um, of course, my wish is for myself, um, uh, on my own demise, that I will be cremated. And I want all the ashes of my children and my ashes combined together and dump our ashes into the San Francisco Bay, because that's the place that I love. So. It wasn't there when she passed away at all. It's, I wasn't there for her. I just hope she forgives me. She forgives me because I wasn't there. Wait, wait, wait. empty now you know at the end of the day it's kind of empty because usually when I'm doing this by myself she'll be you know what I mean? like, like but that's okay oh there's some water for you Barbie yep yeah see this is my daily routine now um, since she's passed away not not, not too long ago I did a makeshift memorial for her every night I do my routine after work you know feed her put some water for her it becomes a routine that you know you can't can't stop until whatever the time it takes to stop, right? So. Two weeks after she passed away, so I'm driving down, coming to work. I kind of miss her, you know? So, so I, just, uh, I was speaking to her, you know, like out loud. She was, uh, I was by myself, and I was like, so Barbie, I hope you're okay. I hope you're fine. I don't know what you're fine, because I didn't find you in a, in a good state when you passed away. I just hope you didn't. Didn't, you wouldn't hurt or anything like that. I just hope that everything's okay with you now. Get to the shop, walked in, sat down, set up my stuff, you know what I mean? Okay, so let's look, check out the email, you know what I mean? Shh, turn it on, boop. Free puppies. Free puppies. It's good home. Give them a call. So is that a sign of my dog talking to me, saying it's okay, I'm okay, or just going with life? I don't know. He's my best friend. He's like, he's there and he reminds me, um, he reminds me about what's important about life. The one I had before this, my mother absolutely loved this dog. She had been, uh, she was a double amputee and had had a massive stroke and couldn't speak, but this dog just jumped up and would go crazy on her. And she could only move her left hand a bit so she would stroke his neck and he would just like bask in it and loved it. So. I, I swear to God, he could be reincarnated. I don't know. <laughs> For the longest time, we didn't want to get another dog. Uh, it was very hard. To... It was going home and thinking he's going to come out. And... It wasn't the pitter-patter on the sound of the carpet when he was running around or the squeaking of the toys. It was it's very the quiet. Door to come yeah. Everything was quiet. Rexy, we came up with. Well, we were Googling on the internet different names. And we actually took about, um, I don't know, about 10 days fighting over different names. <laughs> we like the dinosaur Rex. Yeah, T-Rex, <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> so, so we stuck with Rexy. <laughs> T-Rex would be more the male name. This is a female dog, <laughs> so we added the IE to make it Rexy. But she is a monster. It's a great honor to have dogs and uh, to look after them. They're your best friends. You just give them a water or feed them and they, they just give you so much love in return. Every time one of my animals passes, I, I, it's, it's horrible for me. It's absolutely horrible. Um, but with time, as time goes by, I could deal with it. Um, 
you know, after it's been, you know, a year, two years, I st I'm still upset about it, but I, I, this is where the spirituality comes in, where I feel like they're in a better place now, they're not suffering, and I hope that I'll be rejoining them someday, so I'm going to see them again. That's a big thing for me.